Hey everyone, welcome to episode number nine of the Django Class Space View series. In this episode, we're going to be talking about Create View. Create View is where things get really cool. To me, the best part about um, Django's generic views are when you start working with model instances. That's where um, you can really see how very little code uh, can create so much power. Um, however, there's also the drawback of that where there's a lot of logic going on that you don't know about. So when it does come time to modify, uh, sometimes people can get lost because this is where a lot of the magic happens behind the scenes and that is what we are here to discover. So if we look at create article, um, we have this here, we have a blank form and that is pretty much it, right? <clears throat> if we look at our code, um, essentially like this code right here is something we'll talk about in a second. Um, but this is just needed because we do not define author in the form. Um, we are getting author based on the request user uh, and the database needs that author. Um, we are just defining two properties, template name and form class. And with that, we are able to generate this form right here. Um, so let's go ahead and comment this now. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at, actually let's go ahead and create an article. Um, some new article, some new headline, and this is a hot body, right? And let's go ahead and create. And that just created an article and sent us there, right? So if we look at a blog home, um, we can see uh, that our new article is here. Um, let's, so let's just go see what happened. Um, first of all, uh, now we, we've seen what code we have here. Now let's see why that code works and how we can modify it. In Django, um, Django views generic edit, right? Um, we have a create view, which is what we're inheriting from uh, right here. We're inheriting from create view. Um, here we have two, or we have a base create view and a single object template response mixing. Um, this we've already learned about. It is taking a single object and template and rendering a template with that single object, right? Base create view, um, base create view right here is right above, and it is mapping these to the the get request and the post request. Um, so if we look here, this is the get request where we just got got it, and it's going to set a blank object, and it is going to send up the get request. Um, so this get request, this is calling the super. So this get request is going to go up to process form view. And if we remember from last time, um, last time when we covered process form view, where is it? Process form view. Uh, here's the get request. It's just going to render to response to the context data. And in that context data, it was just getting the form, right? So that is what's happening on the get request. Pretty simple on the get request. It's getting the blank form and rendering it. Um, so you might ask, how does, how does it get that form, right? Well, it is going to be calling. Uh, if we want to take a, let's look at the detail. Hopefully this goes quick, because uh, render response get self get context data. Um, and that is coming from view. Actually, no, we are going to be overriding this. Um, in model form. Shoot, I hope this is right. This might not be right. We might have to backtrack a little bit. Yeah, there's no good context data. So let's go ahead and backtrack this just a little bit. Sorry for the uh, misstep. Um, let's go look at. So that was a mix of process form view. If we go back at the base create view, model form mixin 
and process form mixin. Ah, I've got it now. Okay, so model form mixin. So this is where, this is why it is a little confusing. Um, trying to find stuff. So if you're trying to find why that get context data is returning that, um, and actually you guys might have seen it just right now um, because right above. But in this model form mixin is based on this. So in this form mixin, um, form mixin, this is where the get context data is defined. And it is looking, it's going to be adding quarks form. So it's adding this form from self.get form. Now that self get form is defined here in model form mixin. Uh, get form, or is it? Get form class is going to call uh, is going to look at the form class and it's going to get that. Um, there's also some other stuff built in here. Um, like for example, if we don't want to define the form class, um, we can actually just use, if we don't want to create the form, we can actually just do like model is equal to article um, and it will generate it for us. It'll generate the form for us. Uh, we also need to set the fields. So if we want to set the fields um, to like title, headline, and body, right? That'll create the form for us, right? So we actually don't need to create the form, but we've already created our form. So we're just going to use that. And if we look at our form, you know, we're, we have our form and we, we're, we are setting the fields here. So that's how it knows what fields to, to generate. Um, <clears throat> so that's what all this here is doing. It is looking, if, looking for a model and, and uh, getting the class from, from that. Um, where are we? <laughs> All right, let's go back to the get. So I think we're still talking on, about get. Yeah, okay, so I think we just finished get. So we are we got the context data, which is just the form, and we we're rendering that response, right? Um, simple enough. Post is a little bit more complicated. So when we created the article, we we ran the create, and that, that created a post from... Here we have a form with a method post, right? So it's going to issue a post request to this URL. So here we are going to receive that post. Uh, this is process form, so we're going to go to class create view. So here in the base create view, we are issuing a post, and it is going to default object to none, um, and then it's going to run this post. That post is super, so it's going to run up the list to process form view. Process form view, going to run this post. Um, it is going to set the form to get form. And it is, if the form is valid, um, we are going to run the form valid event. And if it is invalid, we're going to run form invalid. So if we just press create, this is running form invalid, it's getting the errors. Um, when we did create the, f the valid form and we created a new article, we the post ran a form valid. So form valid, uh, let's see, where is that defined? Uh, if we look at our model form mixin, it has a method called form valid. And so we are going to set the self object to form save. So it's going to save the form, create the object, and then it's going to run the super of form valid. So that is why, um, and if you remember, the super of form valid is going to run the form valid that already exists, which comes from form mixin, and that. Uh, is just going to do the response redirect to the success URL. And the success URL is going to look for a self success URL, um, which we do not have. 
if you notice he is going to close that here we have not set a success URL but it still works why does it work because uh, if self, self success URL so I don't set that manually um, it's going to look for a get absolute URL um, if you are not familiar with that method <coughs> I suggest highly suggest doing a quick search on that um, it allows Django to know where to go for a given model instance. So it is useful here in generic views as well as in the admin, um, like in your Django admin. Um, if you set this, if you set that, um, if you set that method, it also have this view on site where it can go to the article. It knows where to go for the article. So I highly suggest using this anytime you have like a detail view. Uh, definitely um, use, use this get absolute URL when you can. Um, so it's going to set the success URL to that get absolute URL. That is why when we created this article, after we created it, it went to the article. And same thing with update. When we update it, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to take us to see the article. And you, of course, can override that. Um, you can override that. And you can either set like you can either set a success URL like here. You can either do like success URL like if we just do this. Uh, let's set this on update, even though we are not talking about update yet. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys. Um, so then it just goes to the home page, right? Um, which it's actually redirected to blog. So that's why I went to blog. Um, you can also do, you never actually want to do that. You want to use reverse and like blog home, right? I don't know if reverse is in reverse lazy. All right, now that'll do the same thing. Okay, but right now we are just using the model instance page. Um, okay, and that is post. Um, form valid we have here we are overriding form valid so if we look at we just look at the form valid here where we are saving the the object and then redirecting right but we're adding one more layer on top of it because we need to add in the author right if we do not have this here and we try and save it gives us that error of not null in the database so we have to add that in. Similar in function-based views, you have to do like, what is it, like commit equals false or something in the form.save, and then you have to add it in, and then you have to do form.save, right? Um, here, we do something similar, but we do it in form valid. When the form is valid, we add the form instance author to the request user, and then we run the super, which runs up the chain, and it'll run this form valid here, and then this super will run the form valid in the form mixin, which does the redirect. And that is pretty much create view in a nutshell. Um, so you know you can really just you can just show this code here and be like, oh look at this, how easy it is. Um, but the problem is that when you have to start modifying stuff, um, it's really easy to get lost if you don't understand what's going on or how these generic views work. So that is our goal of this series, um, to kind of give you guys a, a brief introduction on how this actually works um, so that you guys can modify things and you don't get stuck so much when you get into the coding. Um, next episode, we are going to be talking about update view. Going to be very similar to today's lesson. Uh, just a little bit, little bit different, but um, a lot of similarities. So I think that one um, will kind of reinforce some of the ideas we talked about today. Um, so until next time, have a good one.